हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ए पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर कपेंद्र फ्रॉम किरोडिमल कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द नेचुरल एंड ह्यूमन मॉडिफाइड इकोसिस्टम अंडर पेपर प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ इकोलॉजी आफ्टर स्टडिंग दिस मॉड्यूल यू शेल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ इको learn different kinds of ecosystem present on the earth know different types of natural ecosystem understand the differences between natural and human modified ecosystem ecosystem is a functional unit in which all living organisms and non living component of the environment are linked together through energy flow and nutrient cycle the term ecosystem was coined by a tensley in 1935 the word ecosystem is derived from eco plus system eco means biotic plus abiotic and system means dynamic functional attributes it involves energy and cycling of nutrients between biotic and abiotic component thus the ecosystem is unique to ecology as sustained life on earth is a characteristic of ecosystem not the individual or population all ecosystems can be small or large these unit ecosystems are separated from each other with time and space but functionally they are linked together to form a single whole unit that is known as biosphere the functional pattern of ecosystem is very important because of all of its components are dynamic in one or the other way and are responsible for creation of unique relation of man environment as well as habitat different from other region the major functions performed by an ecosystem are it regulate flow rate of materials including nutrient cycle it regulate energy flow rate through production and respiration in the living organisms it regulate the diversity of living organisms which in turn responsible for its own stability it maintains the limit of tolerance for each organism in the ecosystem it controls alternation of any one component because it is holo synotic in which one component affects the other component types of ecosystems on the earth there are large numbers of macro and micro ecosystems which unite together as a single unit to forms biosphere identification of micro ecosystem will not only help in understanding the ecosystem but also helpful in regional development and planning on the basis of the differences in climate habitat natural vegetation soil and water bodies different ecosystems can be identified broadly biosphere can be categorized into two major types one is terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem and each is further divided into three subtypes on the basis of habitat 
natural ecosystem this ecosystems is formed and maintained in natural ways without any major interference by humans they are further classified on the basis of kind of habitat as first is terrestrial ecosystem it consists of grassland ecosystem savanna ecosystem taiga ecosystem tundra ecosystem desert ecosystem and forest ecosystem forest ecosystem forest ecosystem is predominated by trees which are interspersed by different species of herbs shrubs climbers lichens etc forest occupy around 40% of land area all over the world whereas india has forest cover of less than 19% of its total land area the animal species consists of different species of insects like ants flies mosquito beetles etc herbivores like elephants deer rabbit fruit bat nilgai monkey squirrels moles etc carnivores like snake lizards wolves fox tiger lion etc and decomposers which include bacteria and fungi grassland ecosystem it is dominated by grasses but some trees and shrubs are also found grasslands develop in the area where annual rainfall is around 250 to 270 mm evaporation rate is higher and there is seasonal and annual drought grassland covers around 24% of total land area around the world the fauna consists of herbivores such as deer buffalo cow rabbit mouse insects termites etc carnivores like snake lizard fox wolves birds lion tiger jackal etc and decomposers like bacteria fungi actinomycetes etc desert ecosystem this type of ecosystem is found in the area where average rainfall below 250 mm and here precipitation is lower than evaporation due to scarcity of water and higher temperature the biota is much varied and is poorly represented three life forms of plants can be found first annual plants which avoid drought by growing only when sufficient moisture is there second is succulents these are those plants that can store water and third type of life form is desert shrubs that are adapted to dry conditions the animal species represented by desert ecosystem includes insects nocturnal rodents reptiles such as snakes and lizards camel and few species of thermophilic fungi and bacteria aquatic ecosystems it is associated with the organisms present in the water bodies they have same basic requirement as needed by terrestrial organisms for the process of growth development and reproduction the difference is the form in which the resources are available to the organisms carbon dioxide and oxygen is present as gaseous state in the terrestrial ecosystem whereas 
in aquatic ecosystem it is present in the water as dissolved form depending upon nature and quality of water the aquatic ecosystem is further divided into two types the first is freshwater ecosystem it occupy small portion of earth surface but are important to humans for providing drinking water and industrial use as well as it also acts as life of terrestrial animals this type of ecosystem is further categorized as lotic ecosystem which consists of ecosystems of running water as stream or river ecosystem second form is lentic ecosystem it consists of ecosystem of still water such as lake or pond ecosystem water containing little or no chlorine is called fresh water according to the venis system which classifies brackish water by their percentage of chlorine content fresh water contains 0.03% or less of chlorine the following are the fresh water systems land and pond ecosystem river and streams wetlands such as bogs marshes ferns shrub kar and swamps these systems are fed by water and nutrients leaching from surrounding catchments area pond and lakes lake and ponds have very little or no water current allowing the water body to separate out into layers depending upon the temperature and chemical composition the eliminated warm water is called the epilimnion the cooler water below the metalimnion becomes colder with the depth for every 1 meter depth the temperature declines by 1 degree celsius when the temperature of the water reaches 4 degree celsius and its greatest density it lives as a layer at the bottom called the hypolimnion in shallower lakes the stratification persists during the summer when surface water are warm on the basis of depth of water and types of flora and fauna there may be three zones in the lake or pond the first zone is littoral zone it is the shallow water zone which is generally occupied by rooted plants second zone is limnetic zone it is an open water zone where effective penetration of light takes place and generally occupied by smaller organisms such as rotifers crustaceans insects and their larval stages and algae third zone is profundal zone it is the deep water zone where light penetration is negligible this zone is associated with various organisms such as crabs snails mussels etc on the basis of geology and substrate of the surrounding catchments lakes can be categorized as eutrophic lake which is rich in nutrients and oligotrophic lake which is poor in nutrients the process of eutrophication in lake can also occurs by addition of organic and inorganic pollutants released by industries rivers and streams rivers and streams differ greatly on the basis of 
their size. They also vary along their length from their source in upland, the sea. In general, as the mouth of a river is approached, the velocity of water flow decreases, results less turbulence in water and there is gradual decrease in oxygen level of water. The volume of water gradually increases the river passes through its catchments. There is gradual decrease in energy of the river, suspended materials and continuously deposited as a result riverbed becomes composed of finer particles and eventually seals. The river bed becomes less steep as the water erodes a broader channel. Streams are high in the catchment that are unpolluted will support caddisfly and blackfly larvae feeding fine organic particles. The water will be too turbulent and poor in nutrients for all aquatic mosses, liverwort and algae. The planktonic communities consists of algae, rotifers, photosynthetic bacteria and crustaceans that develops downstream where there is increase in volume of flowing water and decreased water current. Animals may also be present which includes different species of fishes, reptiles, birds and mammals. Wetland ecosystems. Wetlands ranges all along a gradient from permanently flooded area to periodically saturated soil and support different hydrophytic plants species at sometimes during the growing season. Hydrophytic plants are adapted to grow in water or on soil that is periodically anaerobic because of excess amount of water. Freshwater wetlands can be divided into following types. The first is box. Box are the areas having waterlogged soil with spongy covering of various mosses species. These are the landforms which are characterized by the accumulation of peat filled depressions in northern latitude, especially glaciated regions. Second is marshes. Marsh is a wetland that is dominated by grass-like plant species. Marsh is generally found as a zone around a lake or pond or alongside a river. However, it may also occur far away from any water bodies in area where the water table is high. Marsh vegetation consists of cattails, reeds, bulrushes, spike rushes and wild rice. Deep marshes are bordered by emergent vegetations such as pondweed, nights, wild celery and water lily. Third is fen. A fen is an alkaline bog, a mineral rich peatland. Usually fens occur at the base of slopes in the path of mineral charged groundwater that results in a near neutral to slightly alkaline pH. Swamp milkweeds, marsh bellflowers, calms lobelia, grass of parnassus, dwarf birds, etc. are 
कॉमन प्लांट्स फाउंड इन फैन फोर्थ इज श्रब कैर श्रब कैर इज द वेटलैंड वैरायटी ऑफ थिकेट श्रबी वेजिटेशन विच मे इन्वेड मार्शेस फैंस और बॉक्स डॉगवुड्स विलोस बटन बुश एंड बर्चेस आर द मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप्स ऑफ श्रब इन मार्श The fifth is swamp. A swamp is a woodland, wetland, wooded wetland. Swamps may be shrub swamps. It is the swamp with waterlogged soil, often covered with fifteen centimeter or more of water. Elder, willow, button bush, dogwoods are common vegetation. These are also act as nesting and feeding areas for ducks to limited extent and woodland swamps are the swamps with soil waterlogged often covered with 0.3 meter of water found along sluggish streams flat uplands and shallow lake basins tamarack arborvitae spruce red maple silver maple water oak overcup oak topillo swamp black gum cypress etc are usually found plants marine ecosystem these are gigantic reservoir of water occupying around 70% earth surface marine ecosystem differs from freshwater ecosystem in having high salt concentration as well as it is deep continuous and there is continuous circulation of water most of the marine water have temperature of 2 to 3 degree celsius devoid of light and 62% of water is under high pressure the marine ecosystem consists of smaller autotrophs such as planktons mutants etc to larger animals like giant squid fish whales and much greater diversity of autotrophs and heterotrophs the marine ecosystem includes shallow water ecosystem estuarine ecosystem and deep sea ecosystem marine or oceanic ecosystem includes open oceans continental shelves intertidal zone and coral reefs and salt marshes open ocean ocean water can be reached up to 10 km deep and much of the water is devoid of light poor in nutrients and unproductive generally light can penetrate about 150 meters producing a surface zone called as photic zone where autotrophs are present and can perform process of photosynthesis the phytoplankton present in this ecosystem includes cyanobacteria microscopic algae diatoms and flagellates these phytoplanktons provide food and support large number of zooplanktons which includes various larval stages of marine and intertidal invertebrates the planktonic organisms are not able to control their movement but those organisms that are able to swim are part of the nectons below the photic zone various carnivores and detritivores animals are found that feeds on the communities present in photic zones the light penetration and productivity of sea gradually declines with increase in depth 
bottom or benthic fauna is sparse except in regions of hydrothermal vents. 300 thermal vent species have been described from sulfur bacteria to limpets. Tube worms and fish are unique to this habitat. Continental shelves Continental shelves support some of the most productive marine ecosystem, particularly in areas of upwelling where water currents bring nutrients from deep to water surface. Here kelp forests are found which are formed from brown algae such as laminaria species. This anchors itself to the substrate and can grow up to height of 50 to 100 meter or more. The shelf benthos supports a diverse species of animals such as mollusks, annelids, sea squids, porifera, bryozoans, sea spiders, crustaceans, echinoderms and different species of fish population. Intertidal zone and coral reefs. Intertidal rocky shores are dominated by algae. Sand beaches provide an unstable, abrasive and nutrient poor substrate that is inhabited by filter feeding burrowing animals which forms the food for different wading birds. Diverse coral reef communities also occur in warm and shallow water zone. Corals are colonial animals belong to phylum cnidaria which produce complex calcareous skeleton made up of calcium carbonate. These corals provide habitat for various algae, invertebrates and carnivorous fishes. Salt marsh Salt marsh occur in shattered area protected from wave action and provides a stable substrate for colonization by salt tolerant higher plants. Estuary ecosystem Water of most streams and rivers ultimately drains into the sea and the place where this fresh water meets salt water is called an estuary. Estuaries generally develop two important types of ecosystem. The first is mudflat and second is mangrove forest. Now mudflats. Mudflats tend to retain organic matter deposited by the tide because of their small particle size. Estuarine seals consists of river sediments which are very rich in organic matter. The lack of oxygen restricts the survival of organisms in these muds and slits. But the organisms that reaches very high densities provides a rich food source for other organisms including birds. In estuaries where water is brackish, phytoplankton, benthic microflora and invertebrates are abundant which making estuaries an important ground for shellfish and fish. Mangrove forest Mangrove forests replace salt marsh in warmer climates and develop on anoxic mud. They cover 60% to 70% of the coastline of tropical regions. The dominant plants have shallow and widely spreading roots which emerge from the trunk above ground and act as props. Many species 
have root extensions that absorb oxygen from the air are known as nematophores. Genus like Rhizophora dominates in the mangrove ecosystem. These forests are rich with fauna having unique combination of terrestrial and marine life. Fiddler crabs and tropical land crabs burrow into the mud during low tide. In the Indo-Malaysian mangrove forest, mud skippers are found. These are fish that live in burrows in the mud and are able to crawl about on top of it like amphibians. Human modified ecosystem. The natural ecosystems operate as self-regulating system without much direct interference and manipulation by men. However, in nature there is other engineered ecosystems in which man is very much involved and steer its operations. Among man-made ecosystem, agro-ecosystems are extensively prevalent in all part of the world in various forms. Around 60% of the field available for agriculture is used as pre-industrial agriculture in which most of them are present in Asia, Africa and other developing countries. The industrial agriculture is beneficial and greatly in use because it provides sufficient food and fibers for huge growing human population. However, it has certain side effects. Firstly, it adversely affects the smaller farmers which results in their migration towards cities and they become consumers. Secondly, it greatly increases non-point pollution and soil loss. To over around 60% of the field available for agriculture is used as pre-industrial agriculture in which most of them are present in Asia, Africa and other developing countries. The industrial agriculture is beneficial and greatly in use because it provides sufficient food and fibers for huge growing human population. However, it has certain side effects. Firstly, it adversely affects the smaller farmers which results in their migration towards cities and they become consumers. Secondly, it greatly increases non-point pollution and soil loss. To overcome this problem, new agriculture system called sustainable agriculture is emerging which has greater future impact on future agricultural system. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Ecosystem is unique to ecology as sustained life on earth is a characteristic of ecosystem, not the individual or population. On the basis of the differences in climate, habitat, natural vegetation, soil, water bodies, different ecosystems can be identified. Natural ecosystems are formed and maintained in natural ways without any major interference by humans. They are further classified as terrestrial ecosystem which consists of grassland ecosystem, desert ecosystem and forest ecosystem. Aquatic ecosystems associated with the organisms present in the water bodies. Depending upon nature and 
quality of water, the aquatic ecosystem is further divided into freshwater and marine water ecosystems. Freshwater ecosystem occupy small portion of the earth's surface and it is further categorized as lotic ecosystem having running water and lentic ecosystem consists of still water. Marine ecosystem occupying around 70 percent earth surface, it differs from freshwater ecosystem in having high salt concentration as well as it is deep. Artificial ecosystem or human modified ecosystem is engineered ecosystem in which man is very much involved and steer its operation. Among man-made ecosystem, agro ecosystems are extensively prevalent in all part of the world in various forms. Agricultural lands, gardens, parks, horticulture garden, even cities, town, villages, industrial and mining areas are other examples of man-made ecosystem. Thank you.